Welcome back to another video. Okay, so this video is a continuation of the previous video that I did called The Hidden History of Manchester's Irk Valley. What happened was I got to 29 minutes in that video and I had to cut it short because there was just too much. It was going to go on and on. So this video is a bit of a mishmash of uh, stuff that I didn't fit in this particular video here. So it's a kind of a B-side if you like. like the little bits that didn't make it in the initial video. Now in that video we talked about the red sandstone that built that Manchester sits on, the very bedrock it sits on. And that sandstone built some of the earliest buildings in Manchester. We went to Collier's Quarry where they initially quarried it and to be honest with you there weren't a great deal to see and I thought to myself where can we go in Manchester where there's outcrops of red sandstone so we can look at it. Castlefield. All around the canal area here we can see the actual bedrock of Manchester and the red sandstone is 2.8 million years old can you believe it formed in ancient prehistoric deserts and the tectonic plate that it sits on slowly drifted north um, over time and now it finds itself here in the cold north of Manchester and when you look at that sandstone you think my god that used to be an ancient prehistoric desert amazing stuff eh don't you just love it <laughs> i do anyway let's go and take a look at the sandstone and you'll see how flaky it is and you'll see why eventually they actually stop using it to build the buildings but at the moment i'm going around manchester looking at the old buildings and looking at the color of the stone and collecting the old red sandstone buildings in my head so I'm just down on the towpath of the Rochdale Canal near Castlefield and it's amazing because all over the place are these outcrops of the rock of the sandstone and when you scratch it, it sort of really crumbles up. Well this is the stuff that built parts of the cathedral, John Ryland's library and of course the Roman fort. Talking of the cathedral, let's go and have a look inside the cathedral. Right, this is it. 1421 this archway dates from. And what the lady said to me was that all the collier stone in the cathedral is all sort of very rough looking. And it's not because it didn't weather well, because obviously it's inside and it didn't weather very well. But it's because the fashion at the time was, was to kind of plaster over it. So they hewed it, they hewed it out and made it rough so they could put this plaster on the outside of it. Well, since then, they've took it all off. So when you come in the cathedral and look at the stone, it's all quite rough looking. And you can just see the red color in it down below here. And of course, the final thing that's made of Collier stone is the beautiful 
beautiful bridge, the hanging bridge, the Hengen bridge. Um, the nestles just down there next to the cathedral. If I could swear right now, I'd swear to express my love for that structure and how it survived and how you can go on the inside there just at the Cathedral Visitor Centre and go down and see it in its entirety. It is amazing. You can't go in at the minute because apparently it's flooded, which is quite ironic considering there's a big debate as to whether the ditch that it spanned was a watercourse or not. But that bridge there, I love it. It is just so, so old, probably 1400s that bridge. So I just wanted to come down to these um, uh, railway arches, they're actually the arches for the tram and I wanted to come down here because there's a, a place here where in the 50s, I'll put the date down below, there was a train crash and a train actually crashed off the top parapet, I'm not sure if it's these or not but there's a picture, an old picture I'll find and I think the site might just be up here uh, along these arches, uh, we're just right down in the Irk Valley now, right in the middle of Collyhurst. Now some of those pictures were from the internet, some of them were stills from the Pathé newsreel you can go and look at. Can't show you the Pathé newsreel, I'll get a big slap for copyright, um, so I need to be careful. If you want to know exactly what happened in the crash, how it came about, this video that I did here uh, goes into detail about it. So you can just see here that this is the junction, this is the tram line that comes from, uh, one side comes is the Oldham route. On the other side is from Berry, and the trams join up here at the top on the viaduct and we're right underneath the viaduct and down there is the down there is the river Irk. And can you imagine coming off that in a train crash? It'd be quite it'd be quite horrendous, wouldn't it? Okay, so at the end of the last video, when I ran out of time, I talked about areas of Manchester called Little Horrocks, Great Horrocks and Travis Island. And we never really talked about it, we just I just had to end the video. This Travis Island is a bit of a it's a bit of a camelot for me in Manchester. It's a bit of a the lost place that doesn't exist anymore. It's in this area here, you'll see on this map, you'll see this is the area we're exploring, Collierce Road, see Cheat Mill Road over there on the left, Rochdale Road on the far right, the two yellow roads, in the middle you've got the Irk Valley, you've got Collierce Road and in that circle in the green bit is where Travis Island was. Now, I invested in a map. Um, 1845 map of Manchester. Now you'll have to forgive me, the footage here is a bit shaky. I'm trying to show you where Travis Island was, but I'm stood above the map with a bloody camera in my hand. Right, Portland Street, that is Collius Road. And as we follow it up, there's Dalton Street that still exists today. And to the 
just to the up one side of the River Irk is Travis Island Corn Mill. Like I say, sorry about the shaky footage. This is 1845, don't forget. Collius Dye Works and Vauxhall Gardens is still there. Now, we talked about that in the last video. Um, and just I've just gone up here because you can see uh, the sand quarry. Now, this map, Manchester 1793. This will blow your mind. It blew my mind. We're starting off in Manchester, centre of town here. There's the Collegiate Church. That's the cathedral. If you just look closely, you'll see Hanging Bridge there. Again, sorry about the shakiness. Let's follow the River Irk, where it joins the uh, Irwell. Along we go, Walker's Croft. Remember, this is 1793. Walker's Croft, that's where Victoria Station is now. And as we follow the Irk, we go along, and there's Red Bank. Red Bank, which is very old, that's still there. You'll see the two streets appearing now, Little Horrocks Street, Great Horrocks. Again, names in Manchester have long since gone. And it says they're from Travis Island something, and I can't make out what that last word is beginning with F. I also don't get the way the River Irk splits. That blows my mind. And there it is, Travis Island Mill, or Travis Mill. So this thing has long since gone, but we're going to go to that area now. We ain't going to see the mill. And what happened is the railways came through where all this green area is now. The railway came through. It was the Colliers branch from Manchester Victoria Station. So let's go down there and see what that area is like now. Okay, so it might seem like I'm in the middle of the countryside here, but we're literally probably half a mile away from the city centre. And this is an area called, they call it now St. Catharines. We're just off Colliers Road. Um, I think the St. Catharines idea was that we were going to redevelop this whole corridor of the Irk Valley. But um, I think this is the nearest we can get to Travis Island. And God knows how long it's been like this for. It's just so undeveloped and untouched. And if you look over that way there, I'd love to be able to go over there and find evidence of the old mill that used to be here, the Travis Island Mill. Uh, I think when the railway came through, which is just over there, uh, I think it destroyed obviously the mill and it all got neglected, but what a place, just untouched and nature's completely reclaimed it. And like I say, this is the nearest I think we can get to Travis Island. Of course, the river Irk just behind me here, but in front of us is some steps. So if we check out the steps, I think we get a better view. I think we can see Manchester come up there, and we'll get a better view of this whole area that was uh, Travis Island. And then at the top of here, I think is an area called Barney's Tip. So as we climb the steps, I think we have to leave behind the idea that we're going to find any evidence of Travis Island because we're not. What we do find is the remains of what came later, which was the railways. So now we sort of transition to exploring an old railway sidings. So behind me is our improbable hill that we saw, our bridge that Lowry painted. And then I'll show you a view of this, which I showed you in the last video, but I'll show you a view of this from here. A picture taken from here, I don't know when it was taken, of that view there and how it's changed. Okay, risking life and limb, I've just climbed off the uh, bridge. 
I'm just going to show you the remains of the carriage sidings down here because it's a really good view. Let's just take a look at this. Just clinging to the side of the bridge to bring you the shots. <laughs> um, I remember going through there when the railway line was still going, when you took the, the, the branch uh, from Manchester, Victoria, you could come this way and um, you came through Red Bank carriage sidings and you came up here through one of these arches here um, and then it met up with the main line again further up. I'm talking about the railway line that heads north out of Manchester, Victoria up to um, Rochdale Way. Uh, if you don't know the route, I, I do apologise, but this obviously, this was called Red Bank carriage sidings and now it did have part of the main line that ran through it. Um, as you can see, it's no longer. Try and look as much as possible. Try and look as much as possible. So we found a way in to uh, ground level of the older uh, Red Bank carriage sidings uh, and I can show you the railway arches I was just trying to show you now, um, I think. <laughs> it's amazing and I shouldn't, shouldn't give it away should I but this whole land is completely so close to the city centre and yet undeveloped. I think it's owned by Network Rail uh, because it was uh, carriage sidings. Um, there's no fences up on it, we just walked in and all we're doing is leaving footprints and taking photos. But quite a, quite a wonderful place to come and visit. I'm sure it won't be long before it's eventually developed. I imagine this would have been the main line because usually the main lines run along the outside of the sidings so it would have come that way probably and then underneath the bridge here and onwards and up there is um, the tram the tram depot we have a little building there I think we need to go and uh, take a look at So this is obviously has been some sort of railwayman's hut or the carriage side, you know, the shunter man's hut um, but nobody here now, um, probably used by homeless people, can't blame them. So that was the former Red Bank carriage sidings we were exploring there. But if you will forgive an old railway enthusiast for a moment and allow me to indulge in some railway nostalgia, this is how it used to be. And remember the little red hut we've just been looking at.
and there you go from prehistoric rock to class 40s rumbling around red bank carriage sidings thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video very soon